It's become a cliche of sorts in the housewife's fandom that bow renewals are cursed. The story goes that a housewife has a big to-do where she reaffirms her love for her man and then two seasons later, they're getting a divorce. I wanted to explore the notion a bit further, and while I was rewatching these storylines, I realized that some are far better than others. So in this video, I'm going to rank each instance of a housewife renewing her vows. At the end, we'll crunch the numbers and see if this curse really exists. I also made a surprising discovery that we'll explore. Also, as an FYI, I'm ranking these storylines based on entertainment value, not on how successful their marriage is or was. So let's get into it. In last place, coming in at number nine, is Stephanie Holman from The Real Housewives of Dallas. She and her husband, Travis, renewed their vows in a low-key backyard ceremony to honor their 10 years as a married couple. While this was very sweet, there was almost nothing remarkable about it. Her BFF, Brandy, had to leave before the ceremony even started, so we were left with Carrie Duber as the sole housewife in attendance. There was nothing dramatic or iconic that occurred. The most memorable part was that Stephanie fit into her original wedding dress, and she had some sweet self-reflective moments musing on how she knows she didn't really earn all that she has, but that she's so very grateful for it. In eighth place, to my utter shock, is the vow renewal between Shannon and David Bedore in season 11 of The Real Housewives of Orange County. So from the moment Shannon joined the cast, it was very apparent that there was trouble between the two and her season 9 storyline revolved around rumors circulating the OC. It was revealed in season 10 that David had been having an affair during season 9, which was obviously a major hurdle for the couple. It was shocking then when season 11 rolled around and Shannon was absolutely beaming, saying her relationship had never been better. I think selling the story is what led to this vow renewal storyline. So the whole thing was a bit of a Russian doll of surprises for Shannon on her birthday planned by David. He first revealed that they would be going away for the night to a secret location, leading to a funny montage of Shannon guessing where they were going. So are we going to Laguna? I thought maybe you'd take me to the Ritz. Oh, we could be going to La Jolla. Oh, we could be going to Mexico. Where are we going? Turns out he took her to the resort where the two got married. The next surprise was that all of her friends were there, leading to another funny Shannon montage. <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The next surprise was that they would be renewing their vows with their daughters in attendance. It was a bit awkward as Shannon was clearly unprepared and the ceremony was officiated by the minister who Shannon leaned on for support during the affair. With such a stormy marriage between the two, it would seem that this storyline would have a bit more pop, but it really just falls flat. There's almost no controversy as the two cast members on the outs at this point, Vicky and Kelly, are left behind sipping spicy margaritas in the OC, so there's no drama or iconic moments. I also don't really enjoy watching David Bedore on screen. I'm sure it's just due to the unhappiness he felt in his marriage, but there was almost a dark and a misery swirling around him that made him a bit hard to watch. This storyline also really solidifies how mismatched they were as a couple, at least at this point in their marriage. We have Shannon's frenetic energy next to his placid stoniness, and it's clear that the two weren't meant to be in the long run, especially given that this was them at their best. But let's move on to better times, as our 7th place vow renewal goes to Whitney Rose from The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So this was actually the first we ever see of Whitney, as it happened in the premiere episode of the series. The editors pulled a fake out pretending that this is Whitney's wedding before they make the big reveal that it's actually a renewal. This opens Whitney up to really talk about her history, especially as it pertains to the Mormon church. She talks about how her and Justin's relationship was a result of an office affair and it led to them both being excommunicated from the church and disgraced in their community. She looks at this vow renewal as a major do-over, as her wedding was a bit disappointing. We see one of her cousins actually apologize to her over her past treatment of Whitney. It's a great way for Whitney to let us as viewers into some of the more sensitive parts of her life. Still, the storyline is ranked low, as there wasn't much drama at the event itself. The only other housewife in attendance was Heather Gay, though she was essentially a background player at the ceremony. There were, however, two important things that came from it. The first is a bit silly, but there's that footage of Whitney on a stripper pole at the reception, which was used heavily in the promotional material for the show, which largely subverted fans' fears that Salt Lake City would be boring and have uberly chased women. Whitney made it clear that that was not the case. The second important consequence was that it sparked the feud between Lisa Barlow and Whitney that still continues to this day. You see, Lisa, owner of Vita Tequila, gifted Whitney some tequila and bartenders for the event. When the bartenders trashed her home, Whitney thought Lisa would like to know, but Lisa reacted in the worst possible way and things were never truly okay between the two. I think that it was only a matter of time before they had some disagreement as Whitney is so closely aligned to Heather, but still, it was a result of that storyline. 
All right, on to sixth place, which goes to Bronwyn Wyndham Burke from the Real Housewives of Orange County Season 15. So Season 15 was a bit of a dark spot for the franchise, and this was basically the best we get all season. Bronwyn and her husband Sean are celebrating 20 years together and decide to trek the ladies out to Palm Springs to celebrate. Bronwyn has a lot going on this season, but at this point she's just announced her sobriety, which plays heavily into the conflict of this storyline. She asks the ladies if they could refrain from drinking tequila, as it specifically triggers her, but Kelly Dodd and Shannon Bedore just cannot honor her request. Kelly is, as always, loud about her lack of respect for Bronwyn, whereas Shannon is a bit more passive-aggressive about the whole thing. The ceremony itself is a bit cringy. Bronwyn hires a drag queen to officiate, who is totally unable to read the room. We are going to have fun tonight. I'm thinking some of you are a couple cocktails in. And the rest of us need to get caught up. We also get some awkward speeches from her kids. Do you vow to always love mom, even when uh, she embezzles all of your money and runs away in an Apache attack helicopter at 12 a.m.? At the reception, Shannon gets plastered to an uncomfortable degree and talks about her own failed vow renewal to Bronwyn's kids, who straight up laugh in her face. Kelly and Shannon were also fighting about tinctures or something, but, but the whole thing seems a bit put on as they are laughing and dancing together for the night. Jana really shines here as she chooses not to drink in solidarity with Bronwyn and, along with Emily, tries to get to the bottom of newbie Liz's weird relationship. One interesting aspect of these episodes is that they take place at the onset of the COVID pandemic, so we get to hear some of the early rumblings about it and see just how unsure a lot of people were about just how much it would change their lives. While it's the best we get this season, what really bogs this storyline down is just an unlikable cast. None of the drama is really all that fun and simply not that enjoyable to watch. But let's move on to greener pastures with fifth place, which goes to the OG of the OC, Mrs. Vicki Gunvalson, who decided to renew her vows to her husband at the time, the legend Don Gunvalson. So Vicki had always been forthright about her issues in her marriage with Don. We heard much about the state of her love tank, and she talked about how they were in two different places in life, with Don slowing down and entering the retirement stage of life, while she was still killing it as an insurance maven, whooping it up at Andale's. It was early on in season five, however, when she found a new appreciation for Dawn. On a girl's trip to Florida, the rest of the men crashed, which majorly annoyed Vicky. She also saw the controlling nature of both Tamara and Alexis's marriages at the time and realized that she did have something good with Dawn. She decides she wants to reclaim her love, so she whisks him away on a surprise trip to Turks and Caicos and really goes all out. She takes him on a romantic dinner where she presents her wedding album and lets him in on the vow renewal plot, to which Dawn seems genuinely touched. At the beachside ceremony, they recite their vows to each other, with Don focusing on their history as a couple and Vicky focusing on the lavish ring she purchased for him. One and a half carats, princess cut diamonds. Oh. Yeah, Barbara Parker helped me design it. Later on, Vicky reveals that Don said that this all would be good for the show, but that the intimacy was never truly sparked back into their marriage. This ranks on the lower end, as obviously their renewed spark didn't last long, and we learn in later seasons that both Don and Vicky had been having long-running affairs. Hers was notably with alleged grifter Brooks Ayers. Plus, this wasn't a group trip. Tensions were starting to run hot at this point in the season, and we could have ended up with many iconic moments, but alas, it was just Don and Vicky. Still, Vicky is endlessly entertaining. And watching her interact with the hotel staff and traipse around the island trying conk is my idea of good TV. This is really peak Vicky, and I love seeing Dawn on my screen. But let's head over to the East Coast for fourth place, our most recent entry onto the list, which goes to Karen Huger from The Real Housewives of Potomac. So Karen wins the award for stretching the storyline out as long as possible, as it all initially began at the season five reunion. We got to see an entire season of her planning the renewal, culminating in a ceremony acting as the finale party for season six, which I think gives the ceremony a bit of prestige. Despite having many ups and downs in their marriage, the Hugers seem happy to reaffirm their 25 years together, despite Giselle's shady confessional remarks. She puts on a beautiful ceremony, even if many of the women questioned the location. She gave us humor and many looks. We also had drama as Michael Darby, the messiest husband of all time, he put in an appearance after remaining mostly out of things that season. He and Chris and Candace had it out after quite a buildup. Altogether, it was a nice storyline, but it didn't pack nearly as much of an iconic punch as our top three contenders. Third place goes to another grand dame, but this time of Beverly Hills, Lisa Vanderpump. 
For the finale party of season three of the series, Lisa hosts a surprise vow renewal to celebrate 30 years with her husband, Ken. The two disguise the party as a housewarming party for Villa Rosa, which provided some funny moments as the other ladies try to suss out what was really going on. I love any moments spent inside of her breathtaking home, and this storyline really delivered. I'd honestly forgotten just how iconic it was until I rewatched it. We have two separate waves of drama. The first starts off when Yolanda tells Brandy that the other ladies were talking about her at Adrian's magic party recently. She encourages friend of that season, Marissa, to talk to Brandy about what really upset her. Not wanting to lose any possible screen time, the morally corrupt Faye Resnick decides that she too should get involved. This spirals out of control, leading to some rehearsed yet memorable lines being delivered. No matter how many Chanel's you borrow, you will never, ever be a lady. As things start to wrap up, the Richard sisters decide to go at it a bit, as it wouldn't be an early Beverly Hills reunion without some sister-on-sister -sister crime. All throughout the party, people had been whispering about Adrienne Maloof, who had announced her separation from her husband, Paul, just that morning. People were gossiping, wondering if she was going to show up. She finally does, which ushers in our next wave of drama. We see Adrienne roll in, puffy-eyed from crying. She doesn't say a word to Lisa and Ken. Typical, typical laddie Adrienne while the other ladies and Mauricio crowd around her in comfort. This bums Lisa out, and we get a sweet moment of encouragement from her BFF, Brandy. Adrian decides it's just too much to be there and leaves. When we finally get to the ceremony itself, it's just so sweet. Lisa and Ken are notoriously guarded with showing outward emotion, so to see them both be genuinely vulnerable and teary with each other is incredibly moving. Their marriage is very sweet, and I really love this moment between the two of them. So now onto the top two. This was a hard choice, but I ultimately gave the top spot to the storyline with a greater legacy, meaning that second place goes to Real Housewives of Atlanta's Cynthia Bailey, who renewed her vows to her husband Peter in season five. Now their wedding, which was featured in season three, was marred with drama, so in an effort to flip the script, Peter planned a surprise vow renewal in Anguilla, a country that held great significance to Cynthia as she used to model there in her younger days. It was to be a couple's cash trip, which always brings the heat. Before the trip even began, the ladies met up for lunch to discuss logistics and whether or not Kenya would be invited. So I'm invited, right, Cynthia? When a very pregnant Kim Zolciak arrives, it quickly becomes evident that she will not be attending the trip, despite the other ladies changing their schedules to accommodate hers. This is the last straw, as Kim had been continuing to isolate herself from the group and not show up to events. The ladies confront her about their feelings, and Kim has no interest in hearing what they have to say. She storms out of the restaurant into the waiting car of Croy, who nearly gets into an altercation with the cameraman. This is Kim's last lap as a full-time housewife. Of course, we would see her pop up now and again, notably as a friend of in season 10, but this is really how she went out. So now down a cast member, the ladies jet set off to Anguilla, and it truly becomes the Kenya Moore show. She has brought along her boyfriend, Walter, and is convinced that they will be getting engaged or eloping on this trip, despite Walter's complete lack of interest in doing so. At this point, Kenya is solidly feuding with Cynthia and Portia, but she'll add to that list throughout this trip. Nini has heard about Kenya's alleged temper and is dead set on seeing it for herself. She is trying her hardest to provoke Kenya by straight up accusing her of faking her relationship. And eventually Kenya bites back a bit, though not that hard. This is also where the chemistry between Kenya and Apollo really ramps up. She'd expressed interest in Phaedra's husband before. I was like, hmm, Apollo, he's kind of fine. <laughs> but Kenya really steps things up, which sparks an epic feud between the two. It's really Kenya's conflict with Portia that ends up taking center stage on this trip and is what most fans remember. You feel a preach now. Right? Fabulous. Going with the weird fabulous. Okay? Even though I could talk about Kenya forever, we should get to the actual vow renewal itself. So as mentioned previously, this was a surprise for Cynthia, and she was truly out of the lurch nearly the whole way through. The ladies take a boat to the ceremony, and upon docking, there is a clear altar set up, and she's handed a bouquet. It's totally obvious what is going on, but it's like, like nearly halfway through the ceremony before Cynthia accepts what's happening. It's a very sweet ceremony, and definitely worked to write some of the messiness that occurred on her wedding day. I think this was such a romantic gesture on Peter's part, and it's a shame that they weren't able to stay together. We also have some sweet moments between Nini and Greg, who are beginning to rekindle their relationship after the two divorced a few seasons earlier. This storyline really had it all. But now onto the main event. You already know who it is. Of course, it's Ramona Singer from The Real Housewives of New York. 
So this took place in season three, a season in which Ramona had given herself the theme of renewal, which of course had to end with a renewal of her vows. At first, she really did this big and threw herself an extremely luxurious bachelorette party. She took all of the ladies, sans Jill, who, according to Ramona, didn't go because the event didn't revolve around her, and Luann, who stayed behind for Victoria's 15th birthday, of course. So Ramona jet sets off to the islands with newcomer Sonia, Alex McCord, Kelly Ben Simone, and Bethany in tow. At this point in the season, solid alliances had formed around the feud between Bethany and Jill. We had Kelly, Luann, and Jill versus Alex and Bethany, with Sonia and Ramona acting as floaters between the groups. What this meant for the trip is that Kelly was vastly outnumbered. The ladies started on a yacht, and this is where Ramona coined turtle time, and Kelly began to totally unravel. She called Bethany a hoe bag and insisted that she was a cook, not a chef, something she found incredibly creepy. Things escalated when the ladies took to dry land. Kelly treated the ladies, minus Bethany, to a photo shoot, and a new technique was born. Johan face. Johan face, Alex. When Bethany cooked dinner for the ladies, chaos reigned. Kelly insisted that Alex was some sort of demon and that Bethany had tried to kill her, multiple times. In a bizarre turn of events, Sonia came through as the voice of reason and Bethany had some advice for Kelly. Go to sleep! Go to sleep! You're crazy! Kelly ended up leaving the island only for Jill to show up the next day, much to Alex's despair. And there's been enough drama. Right. She was run off the island and the ladies finally returned home. The vow renewal itself takes place in the finale, which again adds an air of prestige. Ramona really went all out, renting out a wedding venue that's across the street from where Alex and Simon wed. It's honestly a true wedding ceremony. We get chaos from the singer clan before they walk the aisle and some classic vows. My favorite thing about this is that it was celebrating 17 years of marriage, which is just so random and clearly put on for the show, but I don't care. It was incredible. So now that we've done our rankings, let's talk about the curse of it all. I crunched the numbers and found that five out of the nine couples have indeed split up. Of those five, four were confirmed to be related to infidelity, and one was due to a revelation regarding the housewife's sexuality. Of the four that are still together, all of them were honoring milestone anniversaries. So, being the math maven that I am, I have determined that just over half of the couples divorce after renewing their vows. Now, if this were a curse, who done it? I'm obviously just being silly. I don't honestly believe that someone has cursed Real Housewives vow renewals, but it is interesting to see that the numbers do support it. Now, I understand the high divorce rate for housewives. Sometimes joining the show can be a bit of a Kelsey Grammer send-off, giving a new life to the newly single ex-wife. Sometimes it can be a result of a couple getting an outsider's view of their marriage and realizing that the harm is irreparable. Sometimes it may be a cry for help, and sometimes fame just changes people so that they're no longer compatible. But it is a bit odd to have a dramatic storyline renewing your vows only to shortly later get divorced. I think maybe some people are making a bit of a Hail Mary play with the vow renewal. Vicky's talked about this being the case for her and Don. At this point, the show has begun to reference the low success rate of vow renewals, yet the ladies continue to do it. It does make a bit of sense to me, as it's a pretty great personal storyline. You can milk out the planning and may even get a trip that revolves around you. You get to wear a beautiful gown and get glammed up. It's a nice gig, honestly. One other observation is that the element of surprise played a role in a good number of these storylines. Whether the surprisee was the bride, the groom, or the guest, we saw it as a factor in four of the nine instances. So I'm sure I'll need to add an addendum at some point, but that's it for now. Let me know what you think. Do you think there is a true curse on vow renewals? Do you agree or disagree with my list? Let me know. I'm so eager to talk about housewives with people who are into this kind of thing, so if you made it this far in the video, I'm sure you have thoughts of your own. Also, if you enjoyed the video and want to see more, please subscribe. A few people have, and I get so, so, so excited when I see it. I'll also leave my Twitter and Instagram in the description as well if you'd like to connect to there. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I think that if somebody is that sensitive to you saying Miss America or Miss USA, that's bullshit. That was almost 20 years ago. It ain't like that's in the back of nobody's mind now. Like, oh my God, Miss America, that was in 93. I mean, ain't nobody discredited, but on the real, ain't nobody thinking back to 93. Oh,